Hey, Redcon Raider here, with special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatlabe, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hoppinskip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. As we venture into yonder cave in search of ancient artifacts and dragon treasure... But somehow I suspect we'll just be finding uh, gratuitous combat and inevitable betrayal. I guess we'll find out. Let's have a look. Hmm, roomy. But I guess it would have to be if you're fitting dragons in here. And those are not dragons. Those are in fact spiders. With swirly buff effects on them. That's unusual. Let's have some fun. Oh wow. That that did not hit any of them. Plus nineteen on reflex. AC-33. We might actually have a fight here. No surprise attack? Okay, how about touch AC? They have concealment. Interesting. Prepare yourself. There we go. Thank you, Aru. And now we're starting to build up momentum. Thank goodness. Cover me, all right? Hey, there we go. Okay. You're a good person. I like you. So apparently this place is serious business. The lower jaw of this dragon skull is fractured, as if destroyed by a powerful blow. So more dead dragons, next to dead humanoids, with evidence of violent death. And some treasure. Oh 
Okay, okay, we'll take that. A couple of actual useful scrolls and uh, a minor loot item. Let's hook right today. Another dragon with its jaw smashed. Which is really, uh, really reinforcing the idea that if you want to kill a dragon, you should go for the jaw. Which, under normal circumstances, would be the part I'd be avoiding, what with the, um, dragon breath and teeth and all, but... I mean, I, I guess you can't argue with results. And more venomous spiders. Are those giant eyeballs on their shells? That is mildly unsettling. speaking. I've seen some folks rock over 300 damage on crits, but I just don't, uh, I don't min-max that much. Oh, uh, constitution bleed out. I will see to your demise. That's from our skinned cloak. Nice, nice. And let's um, keep that guy off the back line. Distract them for me. And we're done. Can't say much for the loot we're uncovering, but I guess it does all add up. I will say, though, when, when someone lures you in with the promise of dragon artifacts, that kind of sets some pretty high expectations. And yet more spiders. Solid opener for member. Oh, uh. <laughs> well, this might be a slight issue. Thanks, Desna. Nice, nice. 
More of that, please. You know what? Let's save our spell slots. We can just brute force these guys. Make your peace. We got sneak attacks that time. Precision and grace. This is a black dragon scale, scored deeply by claw marks. So we had chromatics in the mix. Okay. Still not much in the way of loot or lore items. And that's it for the right side. Let's see what's left. DC 24. Oh, yeah, we, we've got that easy. What can I say? It's not about the sides. It's about the, uh, the leverage. No, no, right at every fork. Now that looks promising. Two hours. That just burned all of our short term buffs. Uh, one sec. That's ah, fine. We haven't really had too much trouble here anyway. Seeing a lot more bones all of a sudden. Ooh, we, we've got a horde off to the left. And here we go. Lathamus quickly and greedily looks around the cave. When he touches the walls, his hands tremble. Oh, this. This must be the Sanctum Sanctorum. Perhaps whatever is hidden behind these doors provoked such violent conflict? Or will we find a tomb of forgotten draconic chiefs instead? I must solve this mystery. Would you look at this? Ancient draconic runes! Even I can only guess at their meaning. Simply astonishing! How many centuries old is this place? Lathamus grins as if he can't quite believe his own luck. And do you see this image? This is Apsu spreading his wings over a clutch of glowing dragon eggs. His spouse is supposed to be depicted right here next to him. But the image has been defaced. 
such blasphemy. Which was, in fact, Tiamat. It says it right there in the tooltip. Lathamus studies the door for a few moments. Such cunning magic. I've never faced something like this before. I'm afraid it will take me some time to unlock this door. Days, perhaps weeks. I'm sure your duty calls you, so I dare not delay you any further. Please, accept my sincerest gratitude, along with this modest reward. Of course, I'll let you know as soon as I find out how to open this lock. I wouldn't be here without your help. And I promise that we will enter the chamber together. You know, my uh, my man Waljif here is a pretty fair hand at arcane stuff. Maybe he could help? Understanding the significance of the signs and symbols etched deep in the rock proves to be a challenge. But your keen mind is able to grasp a few elusive glimpses of meaning. Child. Future. World. I say... This is ancient magic. You cannot conquer it with brute force. It will require many days of thoughtful study and examination. Allow me to deal with this tedious work, Commander. And do not trouble yourself. Uh, you know, Lathamus, Waljif is telling me that these symbols on this door say something about a, a child? And the future of all dragon kind? How very interesting. Uh, perhaps this is a metaphor? Or maybe there is something immensely precious to dragons, hidden behind this door. Something that is vitally important to their future, and the future of the entire world. We stand on the brink of a great discovery. Yeah, I've got to say, this, this is starting to sound pretty important. What do you say we just bash this thing down and get whatever's behind it? No, no, wait. Don't do that. We have no way of knowing how the spell works. What if opening the door by force causes everything inside to be destroyed? No, no, it, it's too great a risk. Besides, do you see that bell? It might alert someone if we try to break down the door. Someone we don't want warned of our presence. Right, right. And it's not, for example, that you just want to be the first one through the door so you can grab whatever's back there before I do. Took the words right out of my mouth, Chief. He turns to Lathamus. Well, you old crook, where's your witty retort? So, you distrust me? What a pity. Believe me, if I had a habit of swindling people, I'd be Lathamus the court archaeologist by now. Or something like that. Instead of just Lathamus the antiquarian. Besides, it will take all of my concentration to unlock this door, and I work better when I'm alone. Please, trust me like I trusted you. All right, I guess. I mean, given that my only other option is to kill you here and now. Um, okay, I guess we'll see how this turns out then. Thank you. To be honest, I work better when I'm alone. I'll let you know as soon as I succeed. I promise not to enter the chamber without you. Yeah, I'm sure. The bell is covered in runes and looks brand new, as if it was put here recently. And yet, despite that, it's covered in moldering bones. That's, uh, okay, so like preservation magic then. Or intense sonic vibrations that disintegrate nearby flesh. Grouping of skeletons does imply that there were several people near it when they died. Alright, let's uh, check out this horde. Ooh, yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. That is slightly more what I would expect from a, a cave full of dead dragons. Okay, so nothing unique, nothing we'll actually use. 
but some pretty nice fender trash. That does help justify our trip out here. Plus, of course, you know, I'm curious to see where this whole thing goes. I've never actually run through this quest. I've only ever reached this point with two of my For Fun campaigns. My Azada, who, for whatever reason, never actually met Lathamus. And my, um, Aeon, who saw a criminal aura around Lathamus and immediately uh, chased him off. Lathamus, like, teleported away before we could confront him. Which is part of why I was really fully expecting him to betray us here, but, um... I guess if he's going to do that, it won't be until later. I mean, clearly, clearly he's here for something specific. He's just not sharing what it is with us. It must have something to do with all these dead dragons. And that note about the child? Maybe like a clutch of dragon eggs? Anyway, let's uh, poke around the rest of the caves. Maybe we'll find more clues. Loot off to the left, but we are continuing to hook right. And right into spiders. I will resist. Um Okay, this this might be a problem. Good. Made room for another one. Made room for two. Guys, please. Thank you, Regil. Thank you, Zorm. Ember? Okay. Okay. We're actually making some slight headway here. Maybe uh, call in some help. Oh, goodness. Y'all right there, Darren? I just realized we forgot to uh, reset Delay Poison. We have a spell for this. Cleanse. Where, where did I... There it is.
Perfect. Glad we actually got some use out of that. I mean, I guess I, I could have probably just graced out of there too, but... I wasn't sure if they'd just keep following him. Anyway, no harm done. We made it through. More black dragon scales. Intriguing. So Apsu is essentially the stand-in for Bahamut, right? We've only specifically found black dragon scales thus far, but I think the general implication is that whatever's behind that door was so important that it had Bahamut or Apsu and uh, Tiamat's followers feuding over it. Which makes sense, given that his eldest son became a great force of destruction. Okay, sharpshooter's gotta go. Otherwise it'll pick off our mages. Time to share your treasures! is not an option. Make your peace. So what I'm thinking is that Lathamus is secretly working for Tiamat. Because notice over the past couple of episodes, he's never actually referred to her by name. But he still seemed gravely offended when we came across that defaced carving that she had been removed from. Given that the door specifically refers to a child changing the future of the dragons, I think it is another offspring of Apsu. Uh, either preserved somehow, or, or maybe just an unhatched egg even which he is clearly hoping to get his hands on before we do. But I guess we'll have to wait and see, because... because short of killing him, we really didn't have much in the way of options here. Oh, uh, hi there. That's cute. Your orders, Commander. <laughs> We've got one right in the middle of our party. I didn't even notice that. Gosh darn it, Finian. Well, on the bright side, these guys kind of suck, so I guess we're okay. Down goes the sharpshooter.
which nets us a uh, trivial amount of additional loot. And I think that's everything we can do. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the only place we haven't really explored is that one big gap just past that door. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's just a, a quirk of the mapping system. It's picking up these untraversable offshoots and waterfalls and stuff as, uh, as unexplored paths. All right, well, we've got time left on the clock, so I guess we'll head back to Dresden. We have a we have an event in the queue, right? I think um, a staffing upgrade. So I guess we'll close things out with that. And I do eagerly look forward to when Lathamus inevitably summons us back, either intentionally or otherwise. I wonder if that's tied into the whole arc with, um, what's-his-face? Hal. The, uh, the gold dragon. That would certainly track, because, I mean, he's right in the same region that they would have been fighting this grand war over the future of all dragon kind. Hey, look at that. And our new teleportation hub is up and running. Uh, obviously, we're headed back to Dresden for now, but that means next time around we can pop right out to uh, Ivory Sanctum. Or maybe the Desolate Hobble, I haven't decided. There are a lot of pros and cons there, depending on which one we do first, so um, I might actually leave that to the Raiders. I'll have to give that some thought. Um, hi. The mage standing before you, wrapped in a torn cloak that somehow appears to be dripping wet on one side, yet faintly smoldering on the other, wearily says, It is my pleasure to inform you that I represent the Absalom Runner's Magical Courier Service. I have a package addressed to you. I regret to inform you that there were a few minor complications in transit, causing the delivery to be slightly delayed. The magnificent and glittering golem, encrusted with gems and covered in intricate flowery embossing, triumphantly exclaims, Happy to be of service! May Shaylin brighten and vivify your day! Cool, thanks. What exactly is this you're delivering? A golem. Uh, the mage consults his notebook. Half of it, to be specific, as the other half seems to have been bitten off. Uh, prestidigipain... Hmm. It's either painter or painful. A prestidigipainter golem, most likely. Delivery to the headquarters of the Fifth Crusade, sent by the Temple of the Sunrise Chrysanthemums, Tianxia. The sender is the temple's prior, a cleric of Shailen, by the name of... Osagu? No, uh, Osaguri. Prior Osiguri also instructed me to convey that the worshippers of the Lady of Chrysanthemums send you their warmest regards, and that they have faith you will defend Galerion from the demonic hordes, and may Shailen brighten and vivify your day. Right, right, so you're a, a battle golem? You, you paint the battlefield with the enemy's blood? I hope. I was not designed for any type of combat, yet I can bring beauty and harmony to any type of combat. Oh. Okay. H how about you? Who, who are you? Mlechik Pence, Courier First Class of the Absalom Runner's Magical Courier Service. 
at least until I make it to our office and inform them of my resignation. A hysterical spark lurks in the mage's gaze. I say, uh, you want to you wanna talk about it? Idly scratching at a smoking bald patch on his head, the mage replies, A shipping error. Wrong portal, wrong plane of existence. Many evil, hungry, vile. With a weary sigh, he stops himself. I apologize uh, how unprofessional of me. There were no incidents whatsoever during delivery. Oh. Well, see, now I think less of you because you're lying right to my face. But thanks. Thanks for the uh, delivery, I suppose. Uh, I, I'm sure I'll find some use for a giant gem-encrusted golden golem. You enjoy your um, early retirement, I guess. With a weary sigh, the mage quickly says, Have a nice day, and consider using the Absalom Runners for all your magical delivery needs. Happy to be of service, and may Shaylin brighten and vivify your day. Well, that is not at all what I was expecting to happen. But apparently we now have a, a golem standing in the corner. Happy to be of service, and make Shaylin brighten and vivify your day. Yeah, hey, uh, what are you? I am a... Prestidigipainter Golem. Many millennia ago, I was built by Aslanti clerics of Shaylin, the goddess of beauty, to make the world a better place. In my joyful service, I have visited many lands, and for the past few centuries, I have resided at the Temple of the Sunrise Chrysanthemums, in Tian Zia. But then, the good cleric saw fit to offer me as a gift to the Mendevian Crusaders, so that you could share in the beauty I can create. And now I have to watch over this priceless walking pile of treasure so some smart aleck doesn't yank out a diamond or saw off a finger. Thank you, wise clerics, for coming up with such a brilliant idea. So what exactly do you do, aside from being very expensive or, or constantly shouting? My creators granted me the ability to place illusions on various items. I can change their color and texture to make them more beautiful and appealing to the eye. Would you like me to cast an illusion over your armor to make it green? Green is a very pleasant color. And it would match your eyes. Oh, this is the, uh, this is the armor customization system. Okay. I don't suppose you can uh, help defend the castle if we get attacked or something? I was not designed for any type of combat, yet I can bring beauty and harmony to any type of combat. Cool. Well, uh, okay. Uh, all right then. Uh, you know what? I hereby appoint you my Vice Commander of Beauty and Aesthetics. Something changes in the golem's beautiful face, making it more dignified and pompous, as any true Vice Commander's face should be. Happy to be of service, and may Shaylin brighten and vivify your day. Of course. All right, let's, uh, let's give this thing a whirl, shall we? Oh yeah, this looks pretty straightforward. So basically, we would just drag whatever we're casting an illusion over here. And then options appear? Oh, okay, it has to be something else that we're also carrying. Or have equipped on one of our party members, because that's Darren's armor. Interesting. Not quite as granular as he implied. We can't, for example, turn this armor green. Unless I'm missing something here but we can replace its appearance with any other armor we find. Not sure I'll actually end up using that, but I might fuss with it off-screen. That would be pure off-screen bookkeeping stuff, though. I do like that they essentially anthropomorphized the new, the new armor customization mechanic. That's fun. Anyway, I, um... I thought we had another quest waiting for us, aside from the main quests, but... I'm not sure anything here is really jumping out at me. 
Yeah, that's Ivory Sanctum. And then best liquor in the world is the Desolate Hobble. All right, let's uh, get some rest. We've got some corruption we need to clear up before we head back out. That'll give us a chance to bank a few more consumable items as well. And hopefully get us some nice verbal banter between the party members. You know, for the uh, for the outro segment. Everybody condemns Nora. I know. But deep down, I understand her. She had nowhere to go. At least the demons gave her some kind of purpose in life. I have thought a lot about her betrayal, but I feel pity rather than hatred for her. Horrific lives lead many people to commit horrific acts. That's kind of interesting. A bit weird, too, because Aru never technically met Nura. I do wonder what she's up to, though. I mean, Nura's got to pop back up at some point. Raising Heroes. Oh, right. Yeah, that's uh, the converting criminals into into stalwart soldiers thing. I forgot we were even doing that. And then Underground Avengers. A group of mongrels that has arrived in Dresden is itching for a fight. Land worries that the belligerent recruits might ignore their orders in battle, lose their heads, and then lose their lives. And thus begins our slow but steady trickle of infinite mongrel warriors. Though, of course, um, given Lance's concerns, we'll go ahead and tuck them in back. We have no shortage of frontline warriors. It's the uh, backliners we really need. Plus, I believe we've already got a stack of these guys in Shai's Shankers. So this will uh, just keep building on that. In battle, the hot-headed and reckless are the first to die. The mongrels were ordered to stand behind the formation so as not to be agitated and spurred into rash actions by their close proximity to the enemy. Ah, and that's why our staff upgrade didn't trigger. Because we didn't actually start it yet. We were still doing the, uh, the Raising Heroes project. Fair enough. Well, I guess that means we'll just uh, take care of that next time we're in town. Along with whatever other events end up in our queue. I mean, I guess we could just pass a day and then take care of this at the beginning of the next episode, but we've had a couple of slower episodes in a row now. So honestly, uh, I'd kind of like to get right back out on the road and uh, hit one of those mega dungeons, Ivory Sanctum or, or the Desolate Hovel. Like I said, I'm thinking I'll let the Raiders decide which location we end up hitting. I'm a few days ahead of our production schedule, so I think I can spare a quick 24 or 48-hour poll. Let me just get the rest of our reinforcements parceled out here real quick. All right, folks, we're past time, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go set up that poll. Decide what our next big step is going to be. We'll hit the pause button for now, but no matter which option the Raiders end up leaning towards, 
We're in for a lot of action in the future. A lot of story stuff, a lot of uh, loot. Because both the Ivory Sanctum and the Desolate Hovel are major story dungeons. So we've got a lot of good stuff to look forward to. See you then. Remember, although I do love playing Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official websites. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description. Horrific lives lead many people to commit horrific acts.